Hi, this is Justin from Sonic Scoop, and we're back for part two in our look at some of the most useful mics that money can buy. Well, last time we looked at mics that were $1,000 and up, and this time we're going to look at mics that are between $300 and $1,000. Mics that can become staples of your studio. We're here at DeGraw Sound, and we've got once again a great lineup of mics from B&H. Got a really cool musician playing for us all day. His name is Wes Hutchinson, and he'll be doing some vocals for us, doing some guitar for us, so we can really get a sense for how these things sound. Let's get started. The first mic in our lineup is going to be this Audio-Technica 4050. And this Audio-Technica 4050 is actually one that the guys from DeGraw Sound have had for quite a while, and it's still working, it's still finding its way into sessions. These are really flexible mics. In a way, like the 414, you kind of put them in front of anything and they just sound pretty good. Polar pattern selection here on the front. You've got low frequency roll off and a pad on the back. And it's just a nice open sounding mic. We were really impressed by just how good this mic sounded after we had tested all of these super high end mics for the last segment. It still kind of stood up. I would say it has a bit more maybe of a scooped, softer mid-range character than some of the mics from our last listening session. This can sound great on anything from drum overheads to male or female vocals, great on acoustic guitar, any place where you need an open, clear sound without too much mid-range clutter. The next mic we're going to check out is its partner, its brother, its sister, or however you want to think of that, the Audio-Technica 4047. The 4047 is similar to the 4050 in some ways. It doesn't have as much in the way of control. You don't have polar pattern selection on this one. You do have the uh, low roll-offs and the pad on the back. But what you do get with the 4047 is a different tonal character, a little bit more mid-range push, maybe a bit more reminiscent of the sound of a Neumann microphone than an AKG microphone. So this 4047, again, really attractive price point on this one, but a slightly different tone than the 4050. A bit more mid-range push. I've loved on things like male vocals, guitar amps, bass guitar cabs, right in the front of a kick drum, any place that uh, some people would use the classic Neumann FET 47. Great sounding mic at the price. And you get to hear this one back to back with the 4050 to kind of hear how their tones differ. The next one in our lineup here is the Rode NT1000. And this is the least expensive mic we've hit so far, but it's one of my favorite affordable large diaphragm condensers and one of the favorites of the guys here at DeGraw Sound as well. This one, once again, actually comes from their collection here. If you're gonna spend in the 300-ish price range on a microphone, this is a pretty good one to look at. There isn't a lot of control on this microphone, or really any. I mean, there's not a single switch or button or knob on the whole thing. It's just a good sounding, affordable mic that you can put in front of most sources and expect it to sound pretty good. For an inexpensive mic, I'd say it has a fairly smooth sounding character, maybe with a little bit of kind of a crisp articulation on the top. It may be a sound that you like. Only one way to find out is by hearing it, and we'll do that in just a minute. The next mic on this list is a step up from Rode. This is the Rode NTK. Not much in the way of controls on this microphone. Again, it's just a good sounding cardioid only microphone like the NT1000. Put it up and it'll sound great in front of a lot of sources. This one has its own power supply because it is a tube mic. I'd say this one is a little bit brighter than the NT1000, but in a pretty pleasant way. It has a nice mid-range push, a nice extended top end. And if you like a little bit of extra clarity, this can really shine on things like vocals, maybe as a room mic for drums or a front of kit mic for drums, maybe on acoustic guitar. This was actually one of the first nice microphones that I owned when I was uh, really starting to get into audio and starting to collect gear. I don't have mine anymore, but a lot of people have held on to theirs. And every once in a while, I kind of wish I did have it around. Step up from this by Rode would be the Rode K2, which does have the ability to change patterns and some other features, and some folks think even a nicer, smoother sound than the NTK. But you'll get to hear this one. It's a pretty cool mic at the price. Even on the brighter end of the spectrum is the Blue Baby Bottle. The Baby Bottle is kind of the introductory mic from Blue. It comes with this pretty cool pop filter you can mount right on its stand. It's a very beautiful looking mic, really attractive design. I would say it maybe came across as the brightest sounding mic of this grouping. If you like bright sounding mics, you might really like this one. Blue is a company that's making a lot of cool designs, really interesting looking designs, and some great sounding designs as well. Enough of me yakking about it, let's start hearing these mics. 
and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about our impressions of the tonal character of each. But let's dive right in and hear this on some acoustic guitar and some vocals. Did it slip away? Maybe we still could. Is it here to stay or has it gone away for good? Don't apologize or act surprised if we go down in Did it slip away? Maybe we still could. Is it here to stay or has it gone away for good? Don't apologize or act surprised if we go down in Did it slip away? Maybe we still could. Is it here to stay or has it gone away for good? Don't apologize or act surprised if we go down in flames. Did it slip away? Maybe we still could. Is it here to stay or has it gone away for good? Don't apologize or act surprised if we go down in Did it slip away? Maybe we still could. Is it here to stay or has it gone away for good? Don't apologize or act surprised if we go down in flames. All right, I'm excited to take it once again to Ben Rice and Gian Stone of DeGraw Sound and hear about their reaction to these mics. All right, guys, we just heard some really uh, affordable large diaphragm condensers. We had those two Rhodes, or we had those two Audio Technicas. We got to hear that blue mic as well. Anything that really stood out for you? I love the Rode microphones. Those are the first real microphone I got, first like large diaphragm condenser that sure. I got. Um, Why did you get that mic? <laughs> it told me to get that mic. <laughs> Good before the U87, so I picked up a road. But out of all honesty, like every time that we put one of those up, sure. I just love the way it sounds. We still use them for room mics on occasion. The NTK, mm -hmm. that sounded absolutely fantastic. Yeah. As well as the 4050. Like, that is yeah. a fantastic microphone for the price. So that NT1000 that we use today, was that one of yours, uh, Ben? Is that one of your early mics? That, that was my first like actual like real mic. Cool. What made um, you choose that one way back then? Because a producer that I was working with, who was kind of mentoring me at the time, said, get this mic. Yeah. He actually told me, go to B&H. <laughs> he told me, go to B&H, you got the He's, mic. He go out and really? pick up. He, well, he told me, go. He said, you need a, a microphone, like get a condenser mic. This is the one you need to get. Get a mic stand. You can't hold these. And yeah. get an XLR cable. Sure. Because that's how you plug it in. And he and, steered you towards that one. Yeah. Because he, I mean, he used those. And... I mean, I don't want to give away like what records, but he was using it on records that he was doing that were commercially released. This was like in the early 
you know, two thousands, and they were selling, you know, a couple hundred thousand copies. So they were like relatively successful records. And he was like, "Dude, this sounds great. Like, just yeah. don't blow your money." He was a huge inspiration, but he was always just about like get good, affordable gear. Don't mm -hmm. be like caught up in like the name of like whatever this is. Like, make good sounding records with what you have in front of you. Sure. And that was something that I definitely tried to <laughs> to take to heart. And but the, I think the NT one thousand is an awesome mic. Yeah. I use that for years as a vocal mic, drum overheads, drum rooms, put on acoustic guitar. For a while, it was one that I recommended to a lot of clients as well. It was one of the only really nice sounding mics in its price range for a while. Probably has more competition now as years have gone on, but did it still hold up to you? Did it strike you as one of the cooler ones from this particular lineup? Definitely. Yeah. All right. Anything the, else that really stuck out to you? Were you also liking the NTK? Was there another one that you'd choose to be one of the best of this bunch? I like the 4050 too. I mean, the 4050 to me is a little bit more like quote unquote open sounding. Maybe sure. that means the road feels like a little bit vibier to me. Yeah. And Maybe the audio techniques are like a little more hi fi in a sense, that 4050. In a totally. Way, right? yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. But I mean, I think both those mics are, are awesome, awesome microphones. What did you guys find yourself uh, using your 4050 on? We actually used your 4050 yeah. today. Occasionally we use it as like a front and kick drum mic. Sure. Use it on, you know, just to kind of blow it out. Um, yeah. It's cool. And I use it on backing vocals pretty recently. I was having a sibilance issue with the singer. So I just kind of throwing up every mic that we had to just kind of see what, what worked best. And, yeah. and uh, it sounded great. Yeah. yeah. I used to use it on bass amps and, and guitar mm -hmm. amps. I think you were talking about using like the, your 4047. 4047, for that, yeah, that and too. guitar amp and bass amp particularly, because that one has yeah. a bit more of that kind of mid range where the 4050 is maybe kind of cleaned out in the mid range a little bit. The 4047 kind of pushes yeah. it forward a bit. Yeah. And it just works in all those places. People put a FET 47, you know, front of the kick drum, front of the bass amp, in front of guitar amp. Yeah. You know, one of my secret weapons was that 4047 on one speaker of the guitar amp mixed with a dynamic mic on uh, the other speaker. <laughs> But uh, really cool, uh, fun combo. Well, yeah. thanks for uh, sharing your take on this one. For Let's sure. go hear some more mics and uh, we'll come back here in a few and we'll talk about dynamics. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right, thanks for hanging out with us and listening through to some really affordable large diaphragm condenser microphones. I think any one of these could be a great addition to your arsenal. It really comes down to which one suits your taste the most. Check these out and more at b &H. Also check out Wes Hutchinson's work. He has a new album out very recently, and I think you'll dig if you've digged the samples that we're listening to today. Remember to check out the other segments on some of the most useful mics money can buy, as well as one coming up very soon on dynamic microphones. Thanks again to b &H. Thanks again to DeGraw Sound. Thanks again to Wes Hutchinson. This has been a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing you next time. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.